16 minutes past eight and uh, time for my favourite part of the morning. And it is time to uh, catch up with Harold the H. Ark, ark, ark. That was better. Not getting good. <laughs> Harold the H. Uh, Peacock. Good morning, mate. <laughs> Uh, good morning, Damo, and uh, yeah, Sparky, he's doing better now once he's warmed up. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks, mate. He's still, yeah. still got to do a lot of warming up, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> it's very high-pitched, really, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Exactly, mate. Uh, nice to chat to you, and uh, a great uh, another uh, another great local Ipswich story. Uh, this morning, talking about the Ipswich's attack of the killer worms back in 1936. That's right. This really did happen, and it was in March 1936 that millions of giant worms attacked Ipswich. They were unstoppable as they advanced from from uh, down on the Upper Logan District on a front of almost 20 miles. Oh. They stretched in almost an unbroken line from Bath Downey to, to Glen Eagle. Mm. The whole of the southern portion of the Fassenburn District was teeming with them. And they steadily advanced on Ipswich, leaving the land totally stripped of herbage behind them. They were eating everything as they went. The worms seemed completely tireless, and not even water could stop them. Like, for example, when they reached a creek, they simply fell in, drifted to the other side, and continued on the way. Ipswich became virtually surrounded. The countryside at Grampian Hills, Perga, Hampstead, Ripley... Brookfield and Model was attacked and devastated. At Ripley, which is of course just seven kilometres from the Ipswich Post Office, the worms attacked on a front of 16 chains. That's 322 metres. Wow. The line of worms was between 18 inches and two feet wide. One report described these worms as being about 11 inches long, mm. dark green in colour and with a black band running the full length. They were grotesque. They were, in fact, a species of army worms, so-called because of the military precision with which their attacks progressed. They were gregarious caterpillars, and that means they loved huge groups to eat, eat with friends, and they had an insatiable appetite. So the larvae advanced without pause, and as they moved, they looked like sort of an animated dark green carpet just continually moving forward. There were millions of things. And they continued denuding country as they progressed. Ipswich was doomed. But then the government called in the big guns. Ah. There, yeah, there was the chief entomologist, Robert Vitch, and his good friend and assistant entomologist, John Waddell, from the Department of Agriculture and Stock. But the biggest of all was a virtual celebrity. His name was William Purcell from the Lands Department. He'd become a legend a decade earlier when he was Queensland's chief prickly pear warden. Yeah. Now, the prickly pear, if you remember, had threatened to destroy farming in the whole of southeast Queensland and perhaps further. That's when Purcell introduced the cactoblastus insect, and a land bigger than the size of a land area bigger than the size of Tasmania was therefore saved for farming purposes. There are memorials to the insect and Purcell to this day. Now, on this occasion to save Ipswich, Purcell had to fight a different enemy, the killer army worms, and they were on Ipswich's doorstep. Now, Damo, this time he didn't introduce another insect to eat the worms, but what he did was unbelievable. He attacked the army worms with flamethrowers. Oh. The flamethrowers <laughs> were used with such devastating effect that Purcell thought that the caterpillars could be exterminated within days. Millions of the little blighters were fried. And Purcell then got some extra help because not only were the worms easy victims of the flames, but they also succumbed when touched by the, the unlit crude oil that was actually being used by flamethrowers. And as well as that, at the same time, the worms were attacked by an increased number of killer wasps. Oh. <laughs> they were the army worms' natural predator when the weather conditions were right. And so with the flamethrowers, the crude oil, and the killer wasps, the natural balance of insect life was restored. And William, William Purcell, he'd done it again. And this time, he saved us all. He saved this switch from the attack of the killer worms, and that was in 1936. Wow, I can't believe they took wow. out uh, took them out with flamethrowers and wasps. <laughs> 
Oh, look, I, look, I, I got photos of it happening. I'll, I'll be posting that online. But uh, it was a scary story that uh, people have forgotten about. Yeah, the attack of the, of the killer worms in 1936. But, Damo, I've got to thank a number of, of listeners who actually helped me in the scientific research for this. Right. There's, there's Thea and Ross, who actually was axe forging in Ipswich all day yesterday. Uh, where else would you do it? Yeah. <laughs> and also, a big thank you to scientist Elizabeth, who moves into a new home at Thornside on Monday. So thanks to listeners. But, uh, yeah, this is yet another story that uh, seems to be, have been forgotten in the mists of time. Well, I'll tell you what, it's another cracking story, mate. Millions of caterpillars known as the army worm uh, descending and uh, taking over Ipswich. Uh, it's a great story. And, of course, uh, we can find out uh, about that story and a lot more stories by uh, jumping onto uh, your website. That's right. Every Sunday morning, I update it first thing in the morning, historyoutthere.com. It's online, History out there. All righty. And have you got any uh, special, um, you know, events coming up, uh, Harold, where you're going out and talking about history? Oh, look, I'm actually uh, w- waiting for uh, for a number of uh, projects coming up in the Ipswich local area. I'm just waiting to get some confirmation on some homes that I might be mentally picked around there. So you never know, oh. Damo, I might be getting it out on site. Oh, mate, Ipswich. and I'll tell you what, you've had great success with that metal detecting too, haven't you? Oh, look, I found so, so much little pieces of history that, that, that relate to real people. And that's what I like. You can find old stuff, but when you can link it to a real person, that helps bring history alive. And Ipswich, there's no place in Queensland, maybe Australia, that has as much history as Ipswich. Yeah, I love it, mate. Thank you so much for that. And we'll look forward to uh, having your chat with uh, Dr. Dan again next week. Thanks very much, Damo, and uh, Sparky, keep up those ark ark ark. <laughs> oh, oh, that wasn't any better. Was Make it? sure you jump onto the website, historyoutthere.com, and you can have a look at that uh, story and a lot more of the wonderful Ipswich stories Harold tells.